Do you feel like your puppy training is missing something? Now, we reference using food a lot as a reward and motivator for your dog's training, but there's actually something else that you could be using in your training that's going to increase speed, drive, and motivation. We're going to talk today about how awesome it is to use toys in your training, but it's not just about using toys. It's actually about how to use them properly. There's going to be certain exercises that toys are going to be great for, certain exercises that they're not, and also how to use them in situations where your dog might be a little bit distracted and it's hard to get their attention. We can make it look really easy with how much attention and focus we get from these puppies in our videos. Now, we do use food to get their attention, but something that we also always incorporate is a toy. Now, after today's video, you may realize that this is the one thing that you could be missing in your training that's gonna make all the difference. I'm Kale McCann. This is 14 week old Border Collie puppy, Smooch. Welcome back to McCann Dogs. So let's talk about the value of toys in your training. There's actually a lot of dogs out there that sometimes lack motivation to work, or maybe they just don't seem that interested in doing stuff with you. And it could be that you need to use a different motivator to get your dog a little bit more engaged. Now, I really like to use both food and toys, but there's certain things that I find toys can really enhance when I'm training my puppy. I'm gonna show you some specific training exercises that are awesome for teaching with a toy, but I also wanna let you know some of the other values that I find helps when you're using a toy in your training one oh thank you hi one of the things that i find can really be great about using a toy is it can really enhance some speed and drive so if you're looking to get a little bit faster response from your dog a little quicker reaction using a toy to reward can often amp the dog up and in some cases that can actually really be beneficial to certain exercises that you're teaching the other thing that's awesome especially if you have a young energetic dog is that when you train using toys as a reward they get tired way faster now in some cases Maybe that's not what you're looking for if you're looking to pro prolong your training session. But I know if I've just come home from a, you know, a long day at work and I need to do something with a puppy and I want them to get tired out quickly, I will choose exercises that I can use with my toy so that I can play and tug and retrieve in between my little training skills. And that tires the puppy out a little bit more. It exhausts some of that pent up energy, all while making sure hi, that we're doing things together um, so that we're using all that energy for good rather than for evil. I talked earlier about the importance of an interactive toy and I wanted to talk a little bit more specifically about what an interactive toy is because the type of toy that you use in your training is actually really important. Now the toy I've used to, uh, to train with Smooch today is one of his absolute favorites. It's just a long sort of furry toy that he can easily grab one end, I can easily grab the other so that we can play together safely. The types of toys that you want to avoid using are things that are hard for your puppy to grab onto. You wouldn't want to use a chew bone or anything like that. You need to use something that's light and fluffy and really fun for your puppy to sink their teeth into. When you call your puppy's name or you use a recall, do you find that your puppy's lacking a little bit of drive and intensity when they're moving towards you? I find sometimes when you can incorporate a toy into training those particular exercises, you can actually ramp up their, their dedication and their motivation to get towards you. Now, I'm gonna show you a little bit about how I do that with our puppies. Hey, bud. Now, I've already put a lot of value. Hey, what's this? Oh, I've already put a lot of value. Get it, get it, get it, get it into playing and tugging with this toy. So he understands that this is a really fun game. So what I'm actually gonna do is use this play. You can see he's really into it. I'm gonna use this play to make a reward for moving to me when I call him. Now, the toy is just one element. This is the reward. I'm also gonna use really crazy, fun, happy tones with my voice. And I'm also gonna use running away. Adding motion away, yes, good boy, naturally sort of ignites that dog's chase drive and gets them to move towards you. So putting all those things together, I'm gonna to show you how to work the toy into your response to name or your recall exercise. Smooch has already had some training on teaching him to respond to his name, so I'm gonna test him today, but I am gonna use the toy as a bit of a reward. So I'm gonna start off by just sort of letting him get a little bit distracted. And when I call him, if he turns and looks at me, I'm gonna take off and run. Smooch, yes! Yeah! So I'm gonna run around like a lunatic. I'm gonna let him have the toy. Woohoo! Good boy! Tuck, 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 tuck. Oh, that's so good. Now I'm gonna end with a bit of control. Out. Good boy. Yes. Excellent. Good boy. And you can even reward for this. Yes, get it. Good boy. So he sat so nice and attentive there. I can actually reward him by letting him do exactly what he wants to do, and that's jump around and play with the toy. Good boy. You may have watched that last demonstration and think like, wow, that's great. 
that looks great but my puppy won't drop the toy like that so i'm actually going to show you a trick that you can use to get your dog to drop the toy a little bit more easily especially if their dog's not that into food you can actually use another toy now i want to remind you guys that if your dogs don't have some of this obedient skills already where they will give the toy up and trade you don't want to necessarily start using your toy in all of your different training exercises until you start with this first so let me just show you how to get the dog to drop the toy so i'm going to get him engaged with one toy tuck, 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 tuck. i'm going to let him get on it what i'm going to do is stop wiggling this one around so it's not as exciting and i'm going to switch him to the other toy out yes yay good boy so i'm going to stop tugging with one toy and I'm gonna shake around the other one. So I'm gonna hold it still, out. Yes, get it! Oh, okay, so this is interesting. This puppy is showing that this toy is clearly the favorite. So, oh, good boy, that was a good decision. So knowing when my dog starts to show me that there's one toy that's more valuable than the other, I need to make sure that this is my finished toy then. I'm gonna start with this one. When he drops it, I'm gonna then use this one. He can have it as his reward. It's just like, if we were to trade in, you had five bucks and I had a toonie and I said, can you tr trade me? He wouldn't be very into that. So I need to be very aware to what my dog feels is more valuable. So I'm going to actually get rid of this toy and I'm going to hide it away a little bit. And I'm going to get him on this one. Oh, <laughs> get it, get it, get it. I'm going to get him tugging. Tuck, 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 tuck. I'm going to sneak this other one out. Good boy. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. I'm going to get him on a little bit harder. There we go. Now he's attached. Out. Yes, good boy, good boy, excellent. So I'm always gonna use that higher value reward to get him to drop, good boy. Now, of course, you could always trade your puppy for food as well. If your puppy was had a really tasty treat like steak or chicken wiener or something that was really high value, but you don't have to be limited to food. You also can just use a toy. I hope you've noticed that Smooch, when he tugs, really does a lot of growling and he sounds really crazy. Now, I know that when we're doing this, this growling sound is a sign of enjoyment. There's no malice behind it. He's simply just having a good time. And one of the things that's really important that when you start to play with your puppy, if you are getting a little bit of growling, is really consider, you know, whether you have control. So I have no problem with him really getting into the thick of things, provided that I have enough control that I can start the game and stop the game. Now there's some myths out there that say that you should never tug and do this type of crazy play with your puppy because it can make them dominant or aggressive. And that's simply not true if you teach your dog that there are some rules. So, you know, from a very young age, he learned that you can't just grab toys whenever you want to. We would start off with a little bit of control. So if I hold the toy up here, good boy. When he was a puppy, if he would lunge for it, I would just pull the toy away. I would work a sit. If he was able to hold the sit, good boy. Oh, yes get it then I would give him permission to play so he can be crazy as he wants but at the end of the day it's me who's in charge that starts and stops the game so don't whoa, don't be too alarmed by the growling if you are concerned at all then stop the play maybe speak to a, a professional and get a little bit more insight about it but this type of growling is simply just pure enjoyment We've just switched locations to do a bit more training with Smooch outside our dog school in the parking lot. And there are people milling around and there's a few distractions uh, that are here. And uh, the next thing that I want to talk to you about is how you can use your toys to help you in situations where the food maybe isn't enough. So if your dog's highly distracted, it is common that some dogs, you know, you could feel like you put a steak in front of their face and they're just not interested. If you know that they have a favorite toy, you can use this as their form of reward. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start off with more basic exercises. So I'm not going to do, you know, a crazy distraction and a really hard skill all at the same time. I'm going to start simple and I'm going to build from there. So we're literally going to start with just some sits and downs. I'm gonna ditch my food and I'm gonna use my toy. Hi, what's this? Good boy, ready? Sit. Yes, get it, good boy. Now notice when I said sit, I stood up nice and tall, look a little bit more like a leader. And I also have my leash loose. Now he is on a leash to make sure I maintain control and safety. Good boy, up. Good, sit. Down. Whoops, down. Okay, good boy. Yes, get it, good boy, okay. So we'll talk about that first. I was trying to go for a down, but I was getting a little bit of distraction. So rather than just standing and saying down, down, down a million times, 
without him paying attention. Now I'm just focusing on getting some attention. Yes, good boy. If he chooses to look at me, we're gonna have a little game of tug. So I'm actually just gonna re sort of root my training here and get him a bit more focused. And this is what dog training is all about. It's about picking the right thing for that dog in the moment. Good boy, so I'm gonna take the toy from him. Good, oh, now I'm getting more natural attention. Good boy, down. Yes, get it, yay, there we go. Now I have some attention. Good boy, out. Good boy, okay, sit. Beautiful, okay, good boy. Nice, good, sit. Yes, get it, woohoo, good boy. Now, he's acing this, but I'm holding the toy right in front of his face while I'm practicing this. And I'm doing that to help him be more successful, but I don't wanna to have to hold a toy out every single time I want him to learn. So this time, or want him to listen, this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the toy and hide it away. I'm gonna ask him for the behavior, and if he responds, I'm going to then bring the toy out. So now it's acting more as a reward rather than a lure. Hey, pup. Good boy. Good. Sit. Yes, get it. Woohoo! Good boy. Get that thing. Get it, get it, get it. Get it, get it, get it. Out. Good boy. Okay. I'm just going to wait for him to disengage. Yes. Good boy. Sit. Oh, you're so smart. Yes. Get it. Do you see how he's actually starting to respond to the behaviors before I can actually get a reward in or get a command in? And that's because he's starting to figure out that when he listens, really fun things happen. And because of this drive for the toy, I can actually start getting him to listen in environments that are a little bit more busy because he knows that the reward is something that he really, truly loves. We love to use toys in our training to work on building motivation, drive, intensity in our work with our pups. But there are some uh, puppy skills that require a little bit more precision. And for those, you're gonna find that using food can be a little easier to calm the mind, to get a little bit more thoughtfulness. And as your puppy starts to get the hang of it, you can then start to incorporate things like tugging and toys. We've just come into the agility arena here and now Smooch doesn't know any agility yet. He's just a puppy, but he has spent a little time in here and he's already learned that when you come in this building, there is lots of fun stuff. So the moment we walk through those doors, he was actually much more distracted than he was in the other locations. So I'm actually gonna take an opportunity to practice a little bit of attention and follow in here using my toy as a reward. This is gonna be really great for those of you who have dogs that maybe don't pay attention quite as much. This is a really fun follow game that you can use with food, but it's especially fun if you use it with a toy. So I'm just gonna start off by having my leash gathered up so I have control, and I'm gonna start off by letting my toy be part of the exercise to make it a little easier for him, and then we can progress from there. So I'm just gonna show him the toy. Good, I'm just gonna move around a little bit. Yes, good boy. If he chooses to follow me, I'm gonna stop and yes and have a little tug and play with him. Good boy, yes, good boy, out, good boy, okay. Wow, good boy. Good, yes, yeah, good boy. So when I move around, I'm gonna move around quite swiftly. You can see my pace, I'm changing direction often. That's to keep my puppy engaged. And I'm actually gonna see how he does when I move sort of like a normal person. Out, good. Look, at he automatically disengages me. But if I move like this, good boy. Oh, look at that. Good boy, yes. See how that movement, yes, good boy, really changes the attention. So you gotta put a little into it if you're expecting your young puppy to really pay attention to you. We don't wanna be a bump and a log and sort of move it around nice and slow. Move with quick changes of pace and also incorporate your voice. You always have your voice on you and that paired with a little game of tug can go a really long way, especially, get it, get it, get it, in a really distracting environment. Maybe you have a dog that's already showing a lot of natural motivation to work and play with toys, but maybe you have a dog that is not that interested in toys quite yet. So I want you to check out a link in the description below all about how to teach your dog to be more motivated by toys so that you can do some of these exercises as well. Using toys in your training is a great way to build that motivation, but we've also referenced using food in this video as well. Now, a really common feeling is that a lot of people are apprehensive to use food because they feel they're gonna become very dependent on it. Now, we have a video specifically about how to make sure that doesn't happen to you, so make sure you click that card right there. If you're looking for some more guidance on puppy training and you'd like to work with one of us to get more specific tips on training your puppy, make sure you check out the link in the description below to find out more about our Puppy Essentials online program. On that note, I'm Kale. This is Smooch. Happy training.